Collard Valley Cooks. Um, I have a roast that I bought before we went on vacation that needs to be cooked. It's been in the refrigerator, and of course it was frozen. Uh, but I thought it out, and it's a shoulder roast, which will be a tougher cut of meat. So I'm actually going to pressure cook it because I've been so busy doing chores all day. I didn't put it on this morning. So if you've got a pressure cooker or an Instapot, I think an Instapot's the same thing except it's electric, um, then just pay attention because I'm going to show you how to use your pressure cooker. I'm going to grab my knife right here. And the first thing I'll do is cut up an onion. Now I'm going to brown my roast. Um, and this onion's been upstairs for a while. I actually keep my onions in the basement and bring them up when I need to use them because it's cooler down there. Uh, see how this one has started to sprout because I've had it upstairs. So I could actually plant that, couldn't I? Um, it's, a, it's a sweet onion. Um, but anyway, I'm going to chop this up in not real small pieces because this is a roast. That part of my onions, uh, then we'll cut it off. And uh, so you don't have to chop it small, just in pieces. And I'm going to go ahead and put this onion down in my pressure cooker pot. Here. Now, now what we're going to do is slice our roast. I'm actually going to slice my roast in half because it's so big and I want this to get done in time for supper and I don't want my pressure cooker to have to cook it that long. So, here it is. I'm trying to think. What I might do is carve this part off so it'll fit down in the bottom of my pressure cooker. See if that'll, that'll, that'll work better in my pressure cooker, about that size of a piece of meat. Um, and I may just save this other part to make uh, some beef broth or something out of it because it was, in such, it was such a good sale that I don't have to worry too much about, you know, not using all of it. I'm going to bring y'all in so y'all can see now. Now what I'm going to do is, now like I said, this is a shoulder roast. This hand is still clean. I didn't touch the roast with it. I'm going to take salt and pepper. Flip it with the other hand. Salt, pepper. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I've already got my iron skillet heating up here. I'm going to go ahead and put it up a little higher. I've got some plain flour and a pie plate. And I'm going to dip my roast in the plain flour because we're going to brown it. It's not as thick as I thought it was, so I'm not going to half it. It's about maybe two inches thick. Inch and three quarters, something like that. I just put way too much oil in there, but I guess it don't matter. Um, anyway, it takes a lot longer to cook the meat in a pressure cooker than the vegetables, and you don't want the vegetables falling to pieces. We're going to lay this down in here. We're going to brown it. We're waiting on it to get golden brown. Okay, I'm going to put just a little bit of marjoram. I don't know if I'm saying that right. But let's pretend I am if I'm not. And we're going to put it down in here with our onion. Okay, so our onion's in there. We're just going to put a little bit of this in there. And I'm also going to use this beef roast seasoning by Pansy's because I can and I hadn't got to yet. I used just a little bit of it before, and it, did, it didn't have a lot of flavor with just using a little bit. So I may dump about half of this thing in there today. Now let's flip this over. It's getting brown.
The fat sure does brown prettier than the meat does. See how pretty and brown the fat is around the edge? This spice is beef roast seasoning. It has paprika, salt, onion, celery, arrowroot, sugar, garlic, black pepper, parsley, dill seed, caraway, turmeric, dill weed, bay leaf, thyme, savory, basil, marjoram, and I just put marjoram in there, and rosemary. So it's got a little bit of everything in it. So I guess if you use this, you don't really need to use anything else, do you? So I'm going to put a good bit of it in here. Four heaping half teaspoons. Now, when you brown your roast, you want to go ahead and flip it up on its sides too. And let them get brown too. You can just lean it up against the side of the skillet like I just did. So right now we're just uh, searing our roast before we take it and put it in our pot to pressure cook it. And we're going to take this and we're going to saute it a little bit. Yummy. Now I got some chicken broth in the refrigerator. Let me go get a little bit for in here. Be right back while y'all watch that for me. Let's see if I can get a little bit of this out of the pot. It's about frozen. It is frozen. Hard as a rock. I'm not gonna be able to use it. My crazy refrigerator. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. Let's just add some water to it, y'all. Smells good. Okay, I'm going to pour this in the bottom. And we're going to take our rose to put down in there. It looks pretty, y'all. Put it down in here. If I have room, I'm going to go ahead and put that other piece of meat in there for fun. And I think I do. It's not seared, but we won't tell nobody. Okay. Now, let me show you how my pressure cooker works, y'all. All right, my pressure cooker has a lid like this and a handle and I just take the handle you can snap the handle off and I snap it back on when I get ready to cook and the seal's already in there okay this is just a regular pressure cooker but it's really easy to use and it has a lock and an unlock button y'all it has a lock and an unlock button on the side of the handle so we're going to go ahead and place this on the pressure cooker and we're going to pull it to, and I'm going to go ahead, let me make sure I got enough liquid in here first. It's not quite to the top of the roast, so I'm going to add just a little bit more. I want it right up to the top of the roast. That's perfect. Right, just barely over the top. Now what I'm going to do is put a couple of shakes of Worcestershire in it. And don't take much, just a couple of drops. Now we're going to put the lid back on it. And we're going to put it in the lock position. I'm going to let y'all see it come to a pressure. The button actually has colors on it. 
and um, as the pressure rises, there's a yellow, there's an orange, and then there's another band at the bottom. I'm going to probably cook this roast at a pretty high pressure because I want it to be falling apart done, and I want it to get done before supper. So I want to hear it, and it should make a noise. Somebody told me they bought a pressure cooker like mine, and they tried to use it, and it made a really crazy noise, and it scared them. They're supposed to do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let this come on up in pressure so that y'all can hear how it's supposed to hear. Now you can see the second red band. So it should start um, whistling here in a minute, a little bit. There it goes. Now, once it reaches the highest pressure, that's what you're going to hear. Um, it does it, It's not going to hurt anything. It's not going to blow up or anything like that. All of these now have safety valves on them. Before it blows up, the, the valve actually pops off and releases pressure. So the whole thing can't come open, but it can shoot stuff out of it. Um, I'm going to turn it down to medium. And I'm going to see about how far this pressure stays. And then once I get it at a good medium, high pressure, I'm going to cook my roast. And I'll probably uh, let it be on that high of a pressure. I'm going to say 45 minutes. So you don't want it so high that it's going to burn on the bottom of your uh, pressure cooker. So let's go ahead and put on 45 minutes on our timer and hit the start button. And um, that sounds good. See, the whistling has gone away, but it's still got a nice pressure. Let me show you all up close. You can still that it's see under a good bit of pressure. But it's not whistling anymore, which is good. So this is a good temperature for it. And look, my eye, my eyes on medium, and it's my large eye. So on a regular eye, it may actually take a little bit more heat to keep it at this temperature. Now we've got our timer on the stove. I will come in here, y'all. Um, I will come in here. Matter of fact, I think I'll change the timer. Um, for 25 minutes because we want to make sure it doesn't burn or stick. So in 25 minutes, I'm going to come in here. It's always going to have this pressure coming out of it. So you can actually smell your food cooking. So you can come in here and do like that. And if there's anything scorching or smells the least bit burned, immediately turn it off and check on it every 10 minutes. You know, make sure that it's got a good aroma and that nothing's going on in the pot that you don't want it to go on, okay? And if it does start to smell like it's scorching in the least bit, turn it off pretty quick and it'll probably be fine. Um, but anyway, I will see y'all in a little while. I'm going to cut up some vegetables to add to it. But, of course, we want our meat to get good and done because if I – Pressurize the veggies, y'all. Once I put them in here and I pressurize them for like 10 minutes, they'll be completely done, quick, fast. It's time to add the veggies. And I've decided instead of putting in russet potatoes and carrots like I normally do, um, what I'm actually going to do is just, I've actually took the eyes off these red potatoes and I'm going to cut them up pretty big in, in hunks like this. And I'm going to put them down in the roast. Um, so we're actually going to use red potatoes today in this roast. And um, it has a real dark broth, I guess, from that um, seasoning we used. That was that pansy seasoning. And then we're going to thicken it, but I can't thicken it while it's cooking or it'll stick to the bottom of the pot. So we will thicken it uh, before we... Pour it over our biscuits, of course, tonight. So right now, I'm just cutting up the potatoes in here. And then we are going to put our pressure cap 
Cooper back on. I'm gonna throw some peas in the skillet that we got dirty earlier with the when we sauteed our onions. Um, and then we are going to um, make some biscuits right quick. And I'm so hungry because I did that challenge today. <laughs> so I'll be glad to eat supper tonight. Very happy to. Whoa, that's a big piece. That'll probably be fine. Okay, you can see that when we pressurized our roast, it didn't really get rid of our liquid at all. I'm going to make sure our potatoes get down in the bottom good. You can see our roast is done. Um, but I'm going to make sure those potatoes get in there good. It does need some salt, y'all. So let's go ahead and add a little salt to it. We'll add about a teaspoon. All right, and now I think because I can, maybe Chris won't notice too much. I'm going to put just a little bit of um, roasted garlic uh, in here if I can find it. Here's my roasted garlic. For some reason, it's in my cabinets that are on my spice rack. But it's a uh, Vidalia, Badia, Badia, however you say it, roasted garlic. Put a little bit of that in there to make it taste good. All right, now, let's put the lid back on this sucker and start this cooking. Then I'm going to show y'all, um, I'm going to make some biscuits right quick while this... Once these vegetables start cooking and they come to a pressure, y'all, they're going to get done so fast. They'll be done in about 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. So we're just going to open some canned peas. It'll be easy. So it, that'll be easy. These are small peas from Aldi. The early peas. My kids will eat peas. Sometimes, if they're in the mood, they like them. They just don't eat them a whole lot. You can tell that the, all the vegetables are full of vegetables and not just a bunch of water, which I like. And we're going to throw these in the skillet since we got it dirty, er, dirty earlier. Why use another saucepan um, to do that? Now, when I do peas, I actually put just a little bit of margarine in them. Or butter, however you got. And I do it because Mama did it. If you want to know why, that's why I do it. All right, so those are going to warm up too. I don't have to add any salt to anything out of a can to me. It's salty enough. All right, now we're going to jump over here and make a few biscuits. And get them in the oven right quick. So let me go ahead and turn on the oven. I'm actually going to use my convection bake. And I'm going to put it on 400 degrees. And click the start. Okay, this is, I was going to try to do this all in one spot today. We'll see how I do. Because you know I usually do my biscuits on my bar. Um, so we'll see how, if I can get this done. I'm actually going to put my biscuits in a skillet today. This is biscuit mix. It's actually the biscuit mix that I mixed up. You know, I showed y'all how to do it yourself. Um, I'm just going to grease the skillet with this Crisco. And I'm going to get out some buttermilk to wet this with. I'll shake it. And I just put in enough to, to wet it good. To get it stuck together good. 
before I cut out my biscuits. We definitely need some more. So what I like about having a roast is, and the reason I make biscuits is because I like to thicken the roast, uh, the broth, and it becomes more like a gravy, and then we can pour our gravy over our open face biscuits, and it's just good. I'm not sure why that thing's doing that. That is so crazy. Over there. I guess y'all can hear that flame acting up. Strange. Sounds like it's getting a draft. Why are y'all doing that? Okay. So I've got my scraper up because. Okay, let's go ahead and grease our skillet. Part of it's wet, but it don't matter. All right. I'm get my sifter down. Like, just like it's getting draft. I have no idea why that sounds like that. I don't know if y'all can hear that or not. Okay. Get these in the oven. Uh, it takes biscuits about 20 minutes. And our, once our pressure cooker comes to pressure, it's going to take in about 10 to maybe at the most 12 minutes. Then I can turn the pressure off and um, our biscuits will be coming out of the oven about the same time that our roast gets done, and then I can just thicken it real quick and we can eat. The biscuit cutter that I use the most is not in here. I'll we'll have to take it out of this set I got. Now, when you make your biscuits, you want them to be about as tall as the rim on your cutter, okay? So you can tell that that biscuit is about that tall. It's so nice to be home and eat real good food. Poor Chris, he didn't even have anything for lunch to take today. He had to go out and eat fast food. <laughs> Poor baby. <sighs> I got enough to make a biscuit out of this. Since it's enough to make a biscuit, I might move my biscuits around. Get them a little further apart. All right, we'll put a little buttermilk on the top of them. Then we'll get them in the oven. Let me rest my hands. what's going on y'all I don't even have the uh, pressure cooker uh, closed that's why it's not coming to pressure it's just boiling so now it'll come to a pressure once it starts uh, once it comes to a pressure and I hear that whistling noise I will uh, put the timer on 10 minutes for my veggies okay hey y'all it's time to get the biscuits out of the oven 
and thicken our gravy in our roast and then it'll be ready to eat so um, I'm about to get these biscuits out of the oven let me look at them they're good and done let me get out some butter we'll put a little butter on top of them and then we're going to thicken this uh, roast up so we'll get our biscuits out This is real butter, so it's not melting real fast because it's cold. We'll use a third cup of self-rising flour, y'all. And then we're going to put in about a cup of milk. Now, you're going to want to use cold milk. Do not take flour or cornstarch and put your hot broth in it to, to make a thickener with where it will make lumps in your uh, soup or roast or whatever it is you're making so you're just going to take flour and really cold milk and whisk it really good to get it so that it won't be lumpy when it hits the roast juice you know me I like to whisk them now I'm going to show you all this pressure cooker and this roast I'm going to release the pressure on it by opening this handle And as soon as that goes down, it will take it but a minute, then I can thicken it. And the supper will be done, done, done. It's about ready. Okay. Let me bring y'all over so y'all can see it better. Okay. I'm trying to see which view would be best. That one's definitely better. Okay, so now we've got our flour and our milk, and we're going to pour it into the roast. And it'll thicken really fast. See, it's already getting thick. So now we've got a good roast. It's falling apart done. And we've got new potatoes down in there. And now we've got a good gravy. And there's still even a little bit of flour uh, coming up to the top. Little pieces where I didn't get it completely mixed up good. But it ain't going to hurt nothing. It'll just be tasty. You can take a whisk and kind of beat it up if you want to. All right, let me make a plate and show you how pretty it's going to look. Hard time I know. Few potatoes. On a few peas. Now I'm going to show you how we're going to do our biscuit. We're going to take one of these biscuits and I'm going to open face it, lay it on the plate. This is a slotted spoon, so it's not going to do. We're going to get a little bit of gravy and pour it on top of the biscuit. And 
And I want to go ahead and show you that this roast is really good and done. It is falling apart done. See that? Okay, y'all. Thanks for watching Card Valley Cooks. This is a really good looking plate of food. It is um, roast, open face biscuit with the gravy we made after thickening it, new potatoes, and just some canned peas. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll give y'all a zoom in close up. And uh, I'm about to eat. I'm starving. This is going to have to be Chris's plate, though. It's too big for me. Thanks for watching, y'all.